So I have a, uh, two questions for you. Uh, so the, my first question is, how can we address the escalating threats of climate change while ensuring the preservation of biodiversity? And my second question is on what specific goals and initiatives are need to be prioritized during UN decade on ecosystem restoration to address global environmental challenges? Thank you for asking me questions and good morning to you once again. I think the first part is very, very important from a perspective that we are all seeing the impact of climate change in our daily lives, right? Uh, uh, we are seeing uh, floods in areas where there was not much rains coming in. We have seen erosion of land, erosion of rivers. We have seen flash, flash floods, we have seen droughts and stuff like that. And the reason for all this is known to all of us. It is all because of the climate change and the global warming that has been going on for many years now. Now comes the time when what actions should be taken. So I think while we are standing in the eastern Himalayan region, I would suggest that we should also look at customized solutions for each region because you can't have a global solution to this subject. You know, it's, it's required that uh, the global warming is going to impact us differently in different locations. So, if you look at the Eastern Himalayan region itself, what has gone wrong? So, one is there is a rampant deforestation. A lot of trees got cut. Why did the trees get cut? The trees got cut because there was more population coming in, there were more people wanting to make construction in buildings and so on and so forth. Or even there were some individuals who wanted to use the, the tree and the forest produce for their own livelihood. Can we get that addressed? If more and more trees can be planted on those lands, I'm sure when the rains come, the soil erosion will reduce because trees bind the soil, right? Similarly, can we work with the community which actually lives off the forest produce. Can we create a livelihood for them which will help them not to deforest? Can we create agriculture based or nature based solutions which actually gives them the livelihood and can be taken up by the industry itself? For example, uh, in a steel industry, we are trying to use bamboo and biochar as a fuel. We are now working through the Tata Steel Foundation along with the community to plant bamboos so that when the bamboos are ready, we, they can sell it to us, we use it in our furnaces. Now that's a nature-based solution which can come in. It creates livelihood for individual community. It gives them the money that they need to sustain themselves. It gives us the raw material for our furnace. I think that's the chain you have to look at. Even if it is Eastern Himalaya, you have to look at what kind of industries can use the nature-based solutions from here. I think that's the first response I can give. Yeah, so on the second piece, which is about the UN's declaration of this whole decade of ecosystem restorations, I think, uh, again, every country will have to look at its own targets. So if I, if I look at India today, uh, India took some targets, announced some uh, nationally determined contributions towards global warming or towards carbon emissions, carbon footprint and we decided that we will reduce our uh, carbon intensity by 33 to 35 percent. We will go up to about uh, 500 gigawatt of uh, solar power or renewable energy sources and so on and so forth. I think in the last review which was done in 2021-22, uh, it came out really well that we have been working towards that target and reaching a little more than the target. And then we have revised our targets now. So now we are saying that it will not be 33 to 35%, it will be 40% and so on and so forth. Secondly, I think for an ecosystem restoration, uh, the country is also looking at getting more and more industries to use non-fossil fuels, which will in turn help us to restore the ecosystems which are getting I would say, uh, impacted adversely because of the extractive industry. Like, for example, in India, we have 
coal based thermal power plants now the more and more renewables get created or generated you will have lesser pressure on the thermal or the fossil fuels and so on and so forth so i think every country will have to look at its own uh, policies and framework and ensuring that the hard to abate sectors like for us in india the hard to abate sector are steel cement power chemicals how are these industries gearing up towards carbon neutrality and i'm i'm happy that india has had it has a target of 2070 for carbon neutrality as a tata group we have it for 2045 and i'm sure other companies have their own targets and surely we will lead to a situation of uh, nature based or living along with nature